The University of Salamanca had a strong influence in most of Europe and in the Americas. The English hierarchy in 1510 and the Irish in 1591 began sponsoring colleges in Salamanca for the training of priests and hierarchy. By 1584, Salamanca had between six and 7,000 students. Its influence was immense. Francisco de Vitoria is often called the founder of the school of Salamanca. Some prefer the term Hispanic scholastics. Vitoria belonged to the Dominican order and studied and taught at the Sorbonne, where he helped to edit a contemporary edition of Thomas Aquinas's Summa Theologica and of the Summa of St. Antonino of Florence. From 1522 to 1546, Vitoria taught at the University of Salamanca. Due to the many great scholars who passed through the university and their many works, the School of Salamanca has received more recognition than other universities. F. A. Hayek, the Nobel Laureate, frequently recognized their scholarly work. Some credited a particular religious order, the Jesuits, for the market-oriented view of Catholics. Lord Acton wrote that the greater part of the liberal ideas of Milton, Locke, and Rousseau may be found in the works of the Salamanca Jesuits. Raymond de Rouver, Marjorie Grace Hutchinson, Murray Rothbard, and Joseph Schumpeter recognized the major contributions of several religious orders at the School of Salamanca, not only the Jesuits. From the perspective of the free economy, the major contributions of the Hispanic scholastics were their focus on the human person as an individual being distinguished by its freedom, their emphasis on the importance of private property for a peaceful, productive, and ethical social order, their conclusions about the importance of the right to trade, both nationally and internationally, the relevance of sound money, both as its role to preserve private property and to aid rather than hinder trade, their analyses equating the just price with market prices, devoid of fraud, monopoly, or coercion, their treatment of wages, profits, and rents as belonging to contracts, commutative justice, rather than distributive justice, which only dealt with justice in the provision and distribution of goods held in common by a family or a political body, and, finally, their careful distinction between legal and moral obligations and punishments. Among the Hispanic late scholastics, we should mention Domingo de Soto, Luis de Molina, Juan de Mariana, and Francisco Suarez. They all presented arguments that served as the foundation of a market order based on freedom and property. Vitoria and his entire school stated very clearly that all rights were natural and the consequence of God's law, not living in God's grace. Vitoria described four different aspects of law, eternal, natural, positive, and international, or use gentium. Vitoria developed even further some views hinted in the writings of Thomas Aquinas, and stressed that the authority to exercise power comes from the community, usually through the operations of its legislative power. Vitoria's views on the origin of rights led to the conclusion that sin did not diminish one's right to private property. The scholars from Salamanca argued that private property is used more responsibly than common property, and that the human person, rather than nature, should be the guiding focus of their questions. Everything was created by God, and everything is, in that sense, good, but there is an order in creation, 
and in that order the human person has domain over the land, the seas, and also the stars. Late scholastics were not economic liberals or libertarians in the modern sense. They believed that economic liberty, to be enjoyed by all, needed an order, and that order needed to be based on the respect of human nature. Their deep, rational analysis, made to complement what they learned by grace and revelation, can be taken in anti-liberal directions. But, as Hayek and Rothbard noted, it can also provide the basis for true liberty.